let us pray. Everlasting God and Father, we thank you for bringing us under your divine presence to study at your feet. Lord, in this great journey to Emmaus, we pray that you expand the scriptures, open our eyes to understand what the word of God is saying to us individually and to us in this generation. Lord, I pray that your grace will accompany your word that we might be able to perform that which is required of us in thy holy word. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Today, I welcome each and every one of you to this great journey to Emmaus. There is a very good Bible study or Bible exposition that the Lord will enable us to understand his word because every word of God was spoken for us to understand. And uh, everything that the word of God says is true. Therefore, I want each and every one of us to listen attentively as we study along. And God will help us to get a very good understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. So today we are looking at a very important topic in this uh, generation. The lesson from the days of Noah and Lot. The lessons from the days of Noah and Lot. The lessons we need to learn from the days of Noah and Lot is a very important one because the Lord Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry he says very emphatically that as it was in the days of Lot as it was in the days of Noah so shall it be at a time preceding his coming therefore we have to make a comparison of what happened in the days of Lot and what happened in the days of Noah in order to compare it with what is happening in our days so as to draw conclusion from it. So whether what happened in the days of Noah, what happened in the days of Lot, is it happening in our days? Then if it is happening, then we know that we are living at a time, at a moment that is preceding, very crucial, preceding to the coming of Jesus Christ. So it is a crucial moment if that is so. Therefore, let us go in and study. As we study, may God bless our hearts to follow through in order to understand. Firstly, I want us to go to the days of Noah. The days of Noah is in the book of uh, Genesis chapter number 6. We are reading from verse number 1 through 9. And it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose and the Lord says my spirit shall not strive with, them, with man always. For that he also is flesh. Yet his days will be a hundred and uh, twenty. And there were giants in the earth. And also after that. When the sons of God also came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, the same became mighty men 
which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And every imagination of the thoughts of his heart is always continually evil. And it repented the Lord that he has made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowls of the air. For it repented me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. And Noah walked with God. Noah did not just find grace in the sight of God, but Noah was the only man that walked with God in his days. Therefore, looking at the days of Noah, what exactly can we learn from the days of Noah? What happened in the days of Noah? What exactly did God see in the days of Noah? What is the conclusion the Lord Jesus wants us to draw from the days of Noah? Now we want to look at it this way. Firstly, the Bible says that daughters of men were being born. And daughters were being born. That is, the days that men began to multiply in the face of the earth, daughters were being born to men. And as daughters were being born, the Bible says that the uh, sons of God, which in this case were fallen angels, took daughters of men for wives and demonically possessed them. So what, number one, is demonic possession? that took place in the days of Noah. And also, the Bible says men became wicked, exceedingly wicked on the earth. The wickedness of men brought about a, trun uh, a, a, a truncated the purpose of God on earth. Instead of man following the ways of the Lord, man started establishing their own way and followed the doctrines of devils. And when this started happening, the Bible says, he repented God that he made man. He grieved God that he made man. Then God decided to destroy the earth. But a man walked with him. Noah found favor in the sight of God. Noah walked with God. And Noah walked with God. So in this case, we are talking about evil increasing. Sin increasing in the face of the earth because men are yielding to a demonic spirit. Today, when we look around us, immorality is here and there. Lies here and there. Wickedness here and there. Lesbianism here and there. Gay marriage here and there. And all this wickedness are in our days. Therefore, as we see the days of Noah, what happened then? It was the time when men started provoking God in their ways of life. Walked away from God. Nobody cared about the ways of the Lord. Nobody cares about the walking in the path God created for us. Nobody actually thought about God Almighty. Everybody was doing what they liked. Everybody yielded at that time to the ways and principles of Satan and therefore truncated the purpose of God here on earth. And the Lord did not waste time to wipe away all the people who truncated his precepts, who truncated the way that God has established for man. Therefore, even today, 
as men are denying God, as men are walking in their own heart, walking after their own heart, because that is what is reigning today. Everybody, they say, follow your heart. Follow your heart. Follow your heart. Nobody is urged to follow the ways of God. Nobody is urged to follow these precepts of God. Nobody is urged to follow the things of God. Only follow your heart. Now, they followed their heart in the days of Noah. And they brought destruction upon themselves. They followed their heart and committed fornication. They followed their heart and sold their souls to the devil. They followed their heart in order to entertain, do entertainment to the devil. Then the Lord did not have any choice than to destroy them. So, having seen what happened in the days of Noah, and God said that I will destroy them, and God sent a great flood to destroy them. Now, let us look at what happened in the days of Lot. The book of Genesis chapter number 19, when we read from verse number 12 to 14. And the men said unto Lot, Lot, Hast thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy thy daughters? Because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. And then Lot went out and spake unto his sons in law, which married his daughters, and said, Oh, get thee out of this place. For the Lord will destroy this city. He seems like one that mocked unto his sons in law. At this point, we want to look at the point that the Lord is making concerning the days of Lot. The Lord said, I will destroy this city. I will destroy this city. Because their sins have waxed great. Their sins have grown so bad. Their sins have become too much. Their sins have become terrible. In fact, what were their sins? The number one of their sins is gay marriage. Men, married men. Women, married women. That is that was number one sin. That is why we are adultery, morality, and fornication, uh, uh, so, uh, um, uh, uh, homosexualism, bisexualism, and uh, lesbianism, and uh, even bestiality. Where it exists, it is called sodomy. It is derived from this, uh, this city that was destroyed because of this particular sin. So today, we see in our cities, in Italy, before this coronavirus took place, there was gay marriage, gay party in different parts of the city. In America, the same thing. So my dear brethren, in Britain, in Germany, they have all approved same-sex marriage. In some part of Africa, they have approved same-sex marriage. Now, this is pure sodomy. This was a sin for which God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And today, we are doing this barefacedly. We are committing this sin barefacedly. And every man is doing these things in our days. In fact, today, people commit sin in such a way that it is you that is looking at them that will become ashamed. People no longer get ashamed of their sins. They commit sin in every nook and cranny of the cities, villages, everywhere. People are now hard-hearted in sin. Therefore, we see the sins of Sodom, the sins of Gomorrah, 
People were committing sin anyhow. Shall we see the book of uh, Genesis 18.20? And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great. This, their sin is very grievous. Today, when we look at our, our cities, our nations, our countries, our villages, our world, it has been filled with sin, outrageous sin. People kill each other for rituals. People kill one another for fun. People shoot each other because of little provocation. A lot of evil have taken place in the world and is still taking place in the world. When we look around us, the world has changed. Kidnapping, slaughter, terrorism, all manner of sin is around us. And here we are. In fact, people kill one another with, for a, the slightest provocation. And we see all these things on daily basis. The way people die around us, missing people around us, people are killed without any kind of qualms of conscience. And this is happening before our very eyes. The sodomy, the sins of Sodom, their sin have worked great. Their sin have grown loud in the land. And the Lord says, I will go visit them and see what they are doing. And in the visitation of God, it was judgment. Therefore, if we look at the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah in our days today, we cannot but say that we have surpassed Sodom and Gomorrah. Shall we see the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter number 29, verse number 21 to 23? Anyone that commit this kind of sin, the Lord was speaking to children of Israel. Anyone that commit this kind of sin, the sins that Sodom and Gomorrah committed, the sins of the newest day committed, Anyone, any nation, any country, any village, any tribe, any city, any individual that commit this kind of sin, the Lord shall separate them for evil. And out of the tribes of Israel. They shall be separated out of the tribe of Israel. According to all the curses, all the curses that are that are in the covenant, that is according to the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 28 from verse number 15 down to the end. That is where the curses were recorded. So that the generation, so that, the generation that will come of your children, of your children that, shall that shall rise up after you and the strangers, and the strangers that shall come from a far land shall say, say when, they see, when the they see the place of that particular village, that particular tribe, that particular people, where they lived when God had destroyed them. And the sicknesses that the law, like coronavirus and the all manner of plagues and cancer and the, uh, HIV and all manner of sickness that the Lord have laid upon their land. And the whole land thereof is brimstones and salt and burning, and that it is not sown. Nobody's planting again there. We very soon we talk about uh, biological weapons and the, uh, all manner of weapons of mass destruction, atom bomb, and other things that men have produced. After the killing, uh, the, the dropping of the uh, atom bomb in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, for many years, for many, many years, all the children that were born there were all deformed. So, my dear brethren, these were what men brought upon themselves. Can we go on and see what the Lord is talking about? A city that is sown in sin, that have been committed to committing sin. A city that has sold themselves totally in sin, that have decided to continue to provoke God. The Lord will allow them to bring destruction upon themselves for sure. It is not sown, nor bearest, nor any grass grow, grow it, bearing. Like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. Now, 
we discover that Sodom was the particular city that committed this sin against the Lord. And when they committed this sin, there are nations among them. There are villages among them. There are countries among them. There are people around them. And those people are the cities of uh, uh, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zeboim. These cities, because they emulated Sodom, they were all destroyed together with Sodom. Therefore, today, we see nations. The world is becoming a global village. When the, one nation... Uh, promulgate the law of same-sex marriage, others will emulate. Others will emulate. Don't you know that you are going against God? God said man and woman shall become one and husband and wife for procreation, not for leisure, not for pleasure. You are only ending up provoking God, truncating the plan of God, hindering the work of God on earth, and therefore you are separating yourself for evil. All you gays, all of you, wherever you are, all you that commit uh, lesbianism, all the uh, bisexuals, all the uh, homosexuals, all you that commit bestiality, all you that fumble, fumble yourself, that you fumble yourself among yourself, you commit all manner of sin, the Lord is against you, and therefore, you do not need to do anything now but done to go on your knees and tell God, I'm sorry that I truncated your plan and purpose on earth and decided to promote evil instead of good, decided to promote error instead of promoting the right things, decided to promote the devil instead of promoting God. This day, the Lord will have mercy on you. As an individual, as a nation, the Lord will have mercy on you as well. All you presidents, all you legislatures that are promulgating this law, you are instruments in the hand of the devil. And therefore, you will not behold any kind of uh, guiltless at all. The Lord will punish all of you that are doing these things unless you repent. Unless you give your life to Christ. Unless you change your ways. Because you are frustrating the plan of God on earth. You are frustrating the purpose of God here on earth. You are going your own ways. Not the ways of the Lord. God will separate you, your family, your village, everything that have to do with you for evil. And the Lord will have no mercy. Because you did not look back when you are doing this. Unless you look back now and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I will not go that way again. Therefore, dear brethren, shall we move a, a little bit as we go to the book of uh, Matthew, chapter number uh, 10, verse number 14 to 15. And whosoever shall not receive you as I am speaking now, as I'm preaching this gospel now, you say, don't mind him. Well, don't mind me and not... I don't bother, I don't care too much, but I am doing the things that the Lord sent me to do. I did not choose this job myself. I did not call myself into this job. I am here to tell you what God say I should tell you because the Lord says, if I, if I want a sinner and you did not want him, I will hold you guilty. But if you, however, want him, I will hold the sinner guilty. I will hold him responsible. Therefore, I am warning you now that the Lord is interested in your soul. Change your ways and mend your ways. And come back to the Lord. He will greatly and abundantly pardon. He will pardon you. If you want any nation and they refuse you, then if they do not receive you, do not, if they do not hear this word that I'm preaching, when you depart from, when you house, depart from that house or from, or from that city, shake I shake up the dust of my feet for anyone that will refuse this gospel. Verily I, say unto Verily I say unto you, either you as an individual or a nation, the Lord says, uh, the, the Lord will turn into hell all the nations. Even if they are, they are individual, the people that forget God, the Lord will turn them into hell. Therefore, right here and right now, if you reject this gospel, listen to what will happen to you. It shall be more tolerable, shall be more tolerable for, the for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah 
in the day of judgment than for that city or for that man or for that individual, for that family, it will be much more tolerable to that individual, I mean to the city of Sodom and Gomorrah that was destroyed in sulfur and the brimstone. It will be more tolerable to them than you on that day. Then let us see the book of uh, uh, Matthew chapter number 11, verse 23 to 24. And thou Capernaum, you have exalted yourself to heaven, all you nations, all you individuals that have become so proud of your inventions. Or you have become so proud because of your, uh, your wealth. You have become so proud because of what you have achieved. You have become so proud about yourself. You exalt yourself to the heavens. You become so proud because you have achieved. You think you have achieved? I want to tell you the end of your achievement. The end of your achievement is rubbish. It's going to be rubbish. It's going to be nonsense. Because recently I saw in a video clip and about uh, uh, people throwing money in the streets of Italy. And uh, because coronavirus have taught them so much lesson that money becomes meaningless. A whole family wiped out, a village, thousands and hundreds of people being buried in a day, hundreds of people being buried in a day. Even if you have a heart of stone, it will melt because the Lord is a God. Now, a day will come when your money, your achievement, all the things you boast about will become meaningless before you. And on that day, I wonder what you are going to do. So, I pray that it will not be too late for you. You will do it, do it quick, and repent, and give your life to Christ. In the name of Jesus. You shall be brought down into hell. You shall be brought down into hell. For if the mighty works, so many, many, many ministers, many servants of the Lord, many prophets have performed around you and you see them, you say, don't mind them. Then there is no problem. If these miracles that you have seen and witnessed cannot change you, a day will come. It shall be more tolerable than the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adam and Zeboim done for you. Praise the living God. So I pray that you will do the needful. You will do the right thing right now. Let us see the book of uh, Jude, verse 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the, about them, and the cities about them, in like manner, in like manner giving themselves over to fornication, they gave themselves over to fornication. And going after strange flesh. They went after strange flesh, that is uh, lesbianism, uh, bestiality, um, uh, homosexualism, bisexual, and different other kind of abominations that you commit in the closed doors and in the open place. Are set forth for an example, they are set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. fire. Now, my dear brethren, I want you to note that God he will not forgive, uh, overlook your sin unless you repent. Unless you say, I'm sorry. Unless you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Right here and right now. Tomorrow may be too late, brother. Tomorrow may be too late, sister. Do it now. Don't say tomorrow. It is here and now. Ask God for forgiveness. And give your life to Jesus. And turn a new leaf. And the Lord will pardon you. He will abund abundantly pardon you. And give you a new life. And give you a new hope. And give you a new eternal life as well. Shall we see the book of, uh, of uh, Luke chapter number 17, verse number 26 to 30. And as it was in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Noah so shall it be in the days of, so it be in the, days of, of uh, the Son of Man. As we have discussed about Noah and Lot, the, day, the way it happened that day, people were doing all their be, uh, business. They ate they drank. They married, they married wives. They were, they were even given to marriage on that very particular hour until that particular day. Until the day Noah, entered the Noah entered the ark and God locked the ark. And, the flood, came. and flood came. Destroyed the people and lifted Noah. Likewise also. Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot. 
They did eat. They drank. They bought. They planted. They built. The same day, on the day that Lot was going out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. That is how it's going to be in the day when the Son of Man will, will be revealed. My dear brethren, I pray the rapture of the saints will soon take place because I will come with more and more end time events. The things that are happening, the things that are happening around us, if it is not happening in our generation, because it must be happening in one generation for us to conclude that it is in that generation that we witness the return of the Lord. And I am praying today, looking at if it is happening, the way it happened in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, the, day, the way it happened in the days of Noah, so it is happening now. And the day, that very day, people were still eating and drinking. People were getting married and building houses. People were doing all their normal business until that very moment. The Lord, then God ordered Noah to enter the ark. And God by himself locked the ark. The day that Lot left Sodom, the angel of the Lord took Lot and his family out of Sodom before the fire and brimstone came. So it shall be. The saints will leave this place before the Antichrist will unleash his evil terror. <clears throat> we unleash his evil upon the earth. And I pray that this day, the Lord our God will save his people. As many as we give their life to Jesus Christ right now, I'm pleading with you. I'm begging you. You can do it. You can do it now. Receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And give your life to him. He will change it. He will give you a new life. He will give you hope. He will give you a new glory. He will bring you to his place. Because Jesus said in the book of John, Gospel of John chapter number 14, from 1 and 2. He said, believe in God, believe also in me. For in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If uh, I go and prepare a place, I come back and take you to myself. That where I am, there you will be also. I pray that you will prepare yourself. That if Jesus returns today, tomorrow, or any day, you will be there. The Lord will take you as well. You will not be like those who are stubborn and hard-hearted. Refuse repentance like in the day of Lot. He went to the children, that the, the sons in laws for them to get out of their city. They refused. They thought that he was joking. I pray that you will not take this message for a joke. I pray that you will not take this message for a ride. Because a day will come when you will see that all these things are true. Because there is no unbeliever in hell. There is no unbeliever in hell. On that very day, you will believe because you will see hell. You will see it and witness it firsthand. But blessed are those who did not see but believe. And I pray that you do not joke with this word today. God will help you and you will do the needful by giving your life to Jesus Christ and surrendering right now, right here in the name of Jesus Christ. It's well with you.